what you can do for your country. The hula hoop remains controversial. <laughs> The Randall Estate, relic of the era known as the Roaring Twenties. It was built by my uncle William Randall, tycoon and philanthropist, whose will is now being read in the library by the family lawyer. That concludes the reading of the will and its provision. Now I would like to read the balance sheet as prepared by Beardsley, Mullins, and Myers. Assets, including bank accounts, stocks, physical properties. This is Aunt Carolyn. The society columns often refer to her as Long Island's most gracious hostess. And this is my cousin Eric. Seven goal polo player, eight martini drinker, and voted by his Princeton classmates the man most likely to be disinherited. And this is me, Maggie Barrett, graduate of Western Avenue Public School, East Oakland High, and Forrester Business School. I came to live with Uncle William and Aunt Carolyn two years ago when Papa died. Which translated into net figures means you owe a total of $463.73. $463.73 in the red. You are now seeing how people of breeding take one of life's blows. They could have been forgiven if they'd reacted violently, but not Aunt Carolyn and Eric. They just sat. <laughs> the Golden Age of Television presents Patricia Crowley, Lorene Tuttle, and Elliot Reed, starring in I Remember Caviar. After these messages, Television presents I Remember Caviar. Maggie, what could have happened? Well, Mr. Prescott told us how Uncle William was the last of the rugged individualists. He made his fortune with daring and lost it the same way. Seems incredible. We're poor. Poor? Darling, where do you pick up those words? I knew a poor boy at Princeton once. He used to wear starch in his button-down collars. Honestly, now we're all behaving as if Uncle William committed a crime. We'll make out. We'll, we'll find a small apartment, and Eric and I'll go to work. Work? Maggie, where do you pick up those words? From my roommate at Forrester Business School. She wore starch in her midi blouse. Well, fortunately, I'm paid up at the club until next month. So I'll move in there. Pick up some eating money playing snooker. <laughs> then, Ed Slater wants me to work on his crew for the Bermuda race. Then the sports car races at Monterey. And the speedboat regatta at Saranac. And a touch of skiing with the Frasers at Sun Valley. That leaves two weeks in May. Darling, I had no idea you lived so pleasantly. <laughs> Miss Maggie thought you would like some tea. Lister, we have been informed that we have no money. Literally, not a penny. I heard, Mrs. Randall. May I offer my sympathy? Thank you, Lister. I'm going to my club and cheat at cards. Oh, Eric, <laughs> uh, while you're there, borrow a paper and check the want ads. Maggie, this is hardly the time for jokes. <laughs> Well, I think I'll go to my room and have a headache. Now, don't worry, Aunt Carolyn. We'll make out. You go ahead and have your headache and then get plenty of rest. And tomorrow morning, we'll go into town and start apartment hunting. Yes, dear. Thank you. Oh, and while we're in town, don't let me forget to drop by Sherry's and order the dessert for Saturday night. Saturday night? Yes, the dinner party for the Frasers. Remember? I always give them a dinner party when they come back from abroad. Well, how, how many will be there? Intimate, dear. 37. 37? But we can't entertain 37. Why, is that an unlucky number? <laughs> Carolyn, we can't afford extravagant dinner parties like that anymore. Oh? Oh, of course you're right, my dear. I must remember to be practical. We'll eliminate Bunny and Jock Pinkley. I never did like her, and he falls asleep during dinner, so he'll never know he wasn't there anyway. <laughs> I'm afraid we'll have to cancel the dinner party. But what about our friends, dear? How will we tell them? And Carolyn. How about 14? I'm sure I can think of someone else I dislike if I concentrate. <laughs> well? <laughs> no, no.
Lister, I hope you'll come and visit us often. Do I have to leave, Miss Maggie? First Aunt Carolyn, now you. Lister, we love you, but we can't afford you. All the Randall relatives have been generous to me in the wills. So, if it's a question of salary... Lister, why don't you make a life of your own now? I've been with the family 28 years, and quite happy. It's a little difficult to start again. Well, we'll miss you very much, but when we find an apartment, I'm afraid you'll have to leave. I'm sorry. Darling, I just thought of someone else I really never liked. <laughs> no. Any illusion I may have had that Aunt Carolyn could accept the harsh realities of the situation was dispelled the next morning when we began apartment hunting. Aunt Carolyn insisted on the building where the Sitwells lived. Everybody knew they were destitute. They hadn't been to Europe in three years. Yes, it might just do. Eight rooms on two floors. And the present tenant will be out the first of the month. Of course, it has no library, but then our books can go into storage. Shoulders to the wheel. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Well, I'll drop the papers, Mrs. Randall. May I have the name of your bank, please? Bank? Oh, yes, it's that one that Buzzy Forbes is the director of. What's the name of it, dear? Chase Manhattan. Chase Manhattan. Chase Manhattan. How clever of you to remember. They're the first words I ever uttered. Is that a checking or a savings account? Neither. <laughs> what is it that you do have at the Chase Manhattan Bank? Friends on the board of directors. Would you mind telling my aunt what the rental is? Oh, certainly. It's uh, $900 a month. Oh! oh! She conceded 900 couldn't be squeezed into nothing too often. Our standard of living dropped very fast after a morning of apartment hunting. They kept getting smaller and smaller. We returned home beaten, but bowed. <laughs> the last apartment had lovely large closets. Those were the bedrooms, Aunt Carolyn. <laughs> My choice was the booth I phoned my bookie from. Picture windows, a built-in telephone, and some interesting numbers on the wall. Ray, how did your bookie take the tearful news that you're insolvent? Oh, it was heartbreaking. The man went completely to pieces and could hardly sob out the words, pay by Thursday. You must send him a note of thanks, dear. Hi, Lister. Good afternoon. It would seem you've all had a tiring day. Tiring and discouraging, Lister. I may have good news for you. After you left this morning, a friend called me about an apartment. I think you'll find quite adequate. Well, can we see it in the morning? I'm sure you can. Now, wait just a minute. Is it modest? I'm told it's quite reasonable. Good, then we'll look at it. That's the spirit. I'm proud to be your side. Mrs. Randall, <laughs> Pierre's called. Your reservation is confirmed. Reservation? Yes, dear, for 10, for the Frasers. For Saturday night dinner, remember? We agreed. We agreed not to have it here at home. And Pierre's won't cost us a cent. We have a charge account. <laughs> I cheered too soon. Well, it's got a slide in the sandbox. We won't have to go to Bermuda. It's a lovely apartment, but I don't know what Lister could have been thinking. I'm sure we can't afford it. Well, I think everyone should live beyond their means. It gives them an incentive. Oh, Eric, you sound like an aristocrat on the way to the guillotine. Maggie is right. Lovely apartment. How do you do? My name is Carson. How do you do, Mr. Carson? I'm the agent for this building. Well, is this a dream apartment? Oh, yes, it's very nice. You know, we have a high-grade class of tenants in this building. Three lawyers, a dentist. Uh, he's really an orthodontist. Oh. Yes. Two chiropractors and your next-door neighbor has a chain of salted peanut machines. <laughs> so has a chain of children. Uh, uh, Mr. Carson, so that we don't take up your time, would you tell us what the rent is? Uh, $90 a month. Ninety? That's outrageous. We won't pay it. Aunt Carolyn, that's cheap. It is. Yes. We'll take it. Yes, we'll take it. No, I don't happen to have a lease on me, but I'll run down and get you one. Oh, you folks have a dream of an apartment here. A dream. <laughs> I can't believe it. Ninety dollars a month. Maybe it's haunted. Aunt Carolyn, we have a home. Maybe some gangster was rubbed out here. Don't be silly, dear. Gangsters are always rubbed out in telephone booths. <laughs> Did they take it? Why wouldn't they at $90 a month? Excellent. Look, I don't get it. I've got two prospects ready to grab that place at $150. let us say I have a personal interest in that family, Mr. Carson. Well, you're the owner of the building. I just rent the apartments. I'll go down and drop the lease. Hi, Mr. 
Mr. Carson. Hi, Kitty. How's that dream apartment of yours? The bathroom needs painting. <laughs> oh, Mr. Lister. Yes? Mom asked me to remind you that you promised to paint the bathroom this week. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I believe she lives in the building. Lovely. I hope she's neighborly. Come on, Lister. I think that Mother and Maggie have found their dream house. Lister, we've taken this apartment. It's quite pleasant. Isn't it beautiful? And only $90 a month. Really? I noticed they have other vacancies. Would you mind if I took a small apartment for myself? Oh, Lister, that would be very nice. In a way, then, we'd still be living in the same house. Maggie, now that we've saved so much money, how about ten at that little French restaurant on third for the Frasers? Eight at the Crystal Room? Aunt Carolyn. Try six at Joe's hot dog stand. Now, look here, young lady. You can push me just so far. Remember my temper on my mother's side. Well, don't make me lose it. Go, Mother, go. The Frasers are my dearest friends, and I'm not going to let them come back from Europe without entertaining them, even if I have to scrub floors to pay for it. Go where, dear? <laughs> Of course you're right, Aunt Carolyn. We'll have the Frasers for dinner Saturday night. Oh, my dear! <laughs> but we'll have them in our home. Here. Here? Yes. Their chauffeur would refuse to drive them into the neighborhood. <laughs> this is our home, and this is where we entertain our friends. But Hilda is gone. Who will cook? I'll cook. I prepare macaroni and cheese magnificently. Macaroni and cheese for Jonathan Fraser? Oh, Margaret, he owns steel mills. And stewed tomatoes, kosher pickles, Italian sourdough bread, and 98-cent burgundy. He's a revolutionist. Well, just think of it. Why don't we have dinner here tonight? With no furniture? Well, we'll borrow a few more Chippendale boxes from the janitor. Come on, Eric, you and I are going shopping. Right now? Without any training? I've never even been in a grocery store. Well, you'll love it. It's very exciting. You get to push the cart. Uh, does Abercrombie and Fitch carry macaroni? They know me there. Be careful. <laughs> It's a movie theater right next door. Oh, we won't have to look in the newspapers to see what's playing. Pardon, madam, I couldn't help overhearing, but are you really going to serve the Fraser's macaroni and cheese? Now, Lister, you're going to have to learn to be practical. Our standard of living has changed, and you're going to have to make an adjustment. You'll have to accept that there's nothing wrong with macaroni and cheese and sourdough bread and 98-cent burgundy. <laughs> The Golden Age of Television will continue in a moment. A brief word of advice. Hey! I sliced the bread. Well, that's wonderful. Let me see your fingers. Ten. <laughs> William would have been so proud of me. Married 31 years and I never sliced bread for him. Well, it takes a while for a young bride to learn her way around the kitchen. <laughs> oh, Eric! I sliced the bread. Mother, your pioneer stock. <laughs> I think I'll go and slice another loaf of bread. That's such a good feeling. Here are the olives. Well, what took you so long? Met a neighbor girl down at the general store. Delightful. Basic, honest, good bones. <laughs> she asked me where I worked. Well, yes, it's a native custom. The male of the family is usually the provider. She even suggested I take the civil service exam for the police department. She sounds nice and sensible. Why don't you marry the girl and join the police department? Marriage and a job? Sounds like double jeopardy. <laughs> Mother! Do we have a bandage? Oh, what happened? I opened a can of tomatoes. Oh, poor dear, you're pressing your luck. Come on, come on, I'll fix it up in the kitchen. <laughs> Eric, would you get that? It's probably the Frasers. Well, good evening, Mrs. Fraser. Eric! Why, this is charming. Eric, Mrs. Fraser, building's well constructed. Eric. Hello, Freddy. Very comfortable. Yeah, and uh, it's got a slide and a sandbox, too. <laughs> Bernie, my sweet Karen, my oh, love. Oh, Freddy. Oh, and Jonathan. Karen, Michael. how are you, dear? How was Capri? Lovely, just lovely. Oh, you must meet us over there next year. The weather was simply <coughs> <coughs> dreadful. <laughs> We're never going back. This is a lovely place. I know you're going to be happy here, and the neighborhood's nice, too. Oh, why can't you come and stay with us? Oh, Bertie, don't be sad. It's sort of fun. 
And you have no idea how convenient this apartment is. Oh! Oh, Bertie, come along. Come, 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 come on. Would you like to see what's playing at Lowe's 72nd Street? Yes. <laughs> Why don't you show us around, Eric? We have. This is it. This is the living room. It's really a living room and dining room combined. And uh, the kitchen is right over there. And this is my bedroom. Isn't that cool, Dick? Speaking of aristocrats going to the guillotine, dig mother. I know. I feel guilty about it. Maybe we should have let her give the party at Pierre's and let her adjust gradually. It's really very nice. You know, nicer than many of the places I've seen on Park Avenue, and it's so... Uh. <laughs> Let's have dinner. Good idea. I am hungry. Oh, so am I. Mrs. Fraser, if you'll sit there. Mr. Fraser. Good evening, Freddie. You know, I've prepared the entire feast. It's only fair to warn you, the management assumes no responsibility. <laughs> Excellent bouquet. What year? Yesterday, I think. They make it in back of the Italian grocery. I hope you all like macaroni and cheese. Oh. Oh, yes, it's very popular in Italy. They always serve it with chicken cannelloni. Good evening, Mr. Fraser. Madam? Uh, good evening, Lester. Did you have a pleasant summer abroad? Pleasant? Oh, yes, yes, very pleasant. Just a slight change in the menu. Excuse me. Just a minute. Lister, where did you come from? There's a conveniently placed fire escape that leads from my apartment directly to your kitchen window. And where did all this come from? Pierre's has a superb service. We met their truck at the curb. Wait. Lister, you can take the squab and the staff and the... Not the champagne, Mother. And the champagne. And you can march them right up the fire escape and down over the curb and all the way back to Pierre's, if necessary. But Mrs. Randall... Don't Mrs. Randall and me. Out. Out! I'm sorry, Bertie and Jonathan, but that's, that's the way I feel. You don't say. Well, that's pretty doggone noble. Are you trying to intimate that I've never eaten macaroni and cheese before? Bertie, get into that kitchen and help Carrie bring in the chow. Yes, Jonathan. Yes, <laughs> Jonathan. And let's not sit around terrified that we might say the wrong thing. Harry, Carrie, and Maggie are penniless, broke, busted. They'll make out. Now, what can I do to help? You can give Eric a job. <laughs> uh, couldn't I lend you money instead? Yes. No. <laughs> Okay. You start in the furnace room with 65 per. Jonathan, look! I opened the can. I just opened it. Good. I'll fire the housekeeper. Let's see. It's a wonderful dinner, wasn't it, Bertie? Oh, yes, it was. It was lovely. I'll walk you to your car. Thank you. Good, good night, night, Eric. Good, good night. night. Oh, uh, I promised I'd stop by and say good night to Kitty. I'll be back in 10 minutes. You're helping with the dishes. <laughs> Maggie, why don't you marry me for my money? Freddie, you've got too much pride. You wouldn't want me under those conditions. Why not? Freddie. Well, maybe you're right. But if you ever fall in love with me, will you tell me? I don't want to hear it from a stranger. When it happens, I'll run all the way. Good night, Maggie. And considerably chastened. Wasn't Aunt Carolyn magnificent? She always has been. Lister, how long have you known her? She was quite young and newly married when I first came to work for the family. And pretty? Very pretty. <laughs> Why don't you take her to a movie some night? <laughs> I would guess that's the first plate you've dropped in 28 years. Is Kitty O'Hara. Hi, Kitty. Hi, Maggie. Have you met Mr. Lister? Miss O'Hara and I have met. Uh, Kitty's offered to do my share of the dishes if I kiss her goodnight. <laughs> is a nice girl like you doing with Eric? 
To tell you the truth, I don't know. If you forgive the expression, my father thinks he's nuts. Well, not a very scientific analysis, but accurate. I feel like a case history in some clinic. I'd be glad to help you with the dishes. Oh, thank you, Kitty, but Lister's helping. Let's go to your place and do your dishes. You can take me to my place, but there'll be no kissing until you get a job. I was lonely and love-starved until I found your pamphlet on the bus. <laughs> oh, Mr. Lister, Mom says thank you for having the bathroom painted. It looks very nice. Oh, you maddening child of nature. My father's right. <laughs> Shall we finish the dishes, Mr. Landlord? Miss Maggie, I told you all the family was very generous to me in their wills. Every time a relative left this world, you went up in it, huh? What else do you own? Two more buildings, a supermarket, and 300 shares of U.S. telephone. <laughs> oh, wow! Ah! Lister, I'm very happy for you. But the rent will be whatever it's supposed to be. <laughs> Lister! I want to apologize for shouting at you, but I must admonish you never to do a thing like that again. You have my promise. And as for you, Maggie, I thought for a while that you might be able to manage this family's future. But I'm sorry to have to say that in times of crisis, you wavered. It's apparent that I am going to have to be the strength. Yes, Aunt Carolyn. Now finish the dishes, dear, and then get to bed early, because we want to be up bright and fresh tomorrow morning when we start looking for jobs. We? <laughs> Does that we include you, Aunt Carolyn? Darling? You know, I haven't seen that picture that's being advertised at our living room window. Lister, suppose you and I go tomorrow night. <laughs> so, I guess that's the first dish he's broken in 28 years. Second, madam. Tonight's the night. The game is a question of scruple.